What's up guys, it's Brandon and Kaylee, and today you're joining us for a drive in the Audi RS e-tron GT. I keep make, mixing up those letters, and it doesn't really matter because the car's awesome, but let's go for a first drive. And you're now joining us inside the e-tron GT RS with Kaylee and Andrew, and we're gonna be going for a first drive, see how this is. I've driven Taycan a little bit, but I've never driven an e-tron, or an RS e-tron GT. I always get those letters mixed up. We're gonna be heading out the parking garage here, and then we'll see how it does. Overall, car feels really tight, uh, very planted, but most cars feel pretty good in the city unless they're riding terribly, so that's really not a good indicator. <laughs> this does have the carbon ceramic brakes, which again, don't really matter in the city. This takes a similar approach to the Taycan where you're actually using regen on the brakes rather than as much through the accelerator pedal. This Avalon behind us trying to cut us off on the side. <laughs> When there's literally people here. Yeah. The noise is really interesting. I kind of like it, but I also wish I could turn it off. I, I don't think I'd want to have that on all the time if I lived with one of these. Yeah. It'll probably be nice with a little bit of sporty driving though. Alcantara wheel is actually holding up pretty well with lots of people hopping in and out of it and like wiping it off and stuff which yeah. I'm impressed by let's see if we can actually get some opening here got a model x in front of us It's fast, <laughs> as you'd expect, but that's really only half the story on this car. It certainly gets up and goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's certainly a little weird lifting off the pedal on a fast EV and not having it regen aggressively. Ride comfort's really good, nice and quiet. This has the solid carbon roof instead of a panoramic roof. That makes it a little bit lighter up top and possibly a little quieter, possibly a little louder, because carbon can add reverberations into the cabin. But overall it's quiet, so whatever they're doing works. Visibility is not amazing. That's kind of to be expected in a fairly sporty car. Yeah. How's the back seat? Uh, very good. Okay. Great. Decent legroom? Decent legroom. Um, I would say the Noise levels are actually quite good compared to other EVs in this segment. Okay. Uh, and it's not too bad to Okay. Nice. Not that this is really a car that the back seat will probably get used that much, but it's still good to have one that's functional. I, I've been in friends while as plats and uh, they're considerably more bouncy. Okay. So. I think that will be a common cross shot for this for someone that doesn't necessarily need the practicality of a plaid. As ridiculous of a statement as that is, right. a, a Model S is a pretty practical vehicle. Yeah. Very impressed by the suspension on this. Yeah, it's quite nice. And we're actually in dynamic drive mode. Interesting. So if we put it in comfort, it's actually smoother. Maybe not super noticeable though. Yeah kind of hard to tell. It feels a little floatier, but I don't know if it's necessarily cool, like actually better ride. It has a heads up display that is a bit hard to see with polarized sunglasses, <laughs> but is there. Very comfortable. 
<laughs> I am glad. That is a good sign. These seats are awesome. Yeah. Audi always does their interior as well, so that's really no surprise. Yeah. I don't think I've been in an Audi in a very long time. That the interior is not at least good, if not great. Yeah. Obviously, this is kind of the halo car for Audi at the moment. So it should be very good. All right, now we're on some actual twisties. So far, turn-in is so sharp. Bike. Brakes, awesome, they're carbon ceramics. Tail did want to step out on one of those yeah, corners back there. That's what he was saying, there. I think. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Has a lot of power. I'm using probably half throttle, except for right there. It's so quiet in here. Here's the fire department. Slow down. sport instead of just off. Alright. I was trying to put it into ESC sport but it doesn't seem to want to do that. Because I want a little bit more slip angle but I don't want to put it into a wall either. So much grip. back there. I'm good. Still comfy. <laughs> oh, I guess we're fairly low on charge. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oops. What's it at? Uh, it says we'll reach our destination with 9%. Mm, okay. Well, this says we're still going 22 miles, so that's probably plenty, but yeah, we probably should turn around. <laughs> oh yeah, we have 49 miles of range. Mm, so yeah. that's fun. We'll probably go up couple more corners here and then find a turn off and turn around but yeah. I did not realize we were so low on range <laughs> oh that's a beautiful 911 that's gonna probably be an issue because I, I think other people still want to drive this too I mean it charges pretty quick right it charges quick if it has oh yeah it, just, it only has 50 kilowatts <laughs> <laughs> no because it, it does charge stupid fast yeah with high enough input yeah yikes well, hopefully too not there's not too many people that want to drive this left. Yeah, I did not realize it was so low on charge. This car has been out all day though. That was some beautiful 911s. Well, I feel like this is the car everyone like kind of flogged. Yeah. This car is really comfortable just to take this leisurely too. Yeah. This is just like a good for everything vehicle. Yeah, I wish they made a wagon version of this. Assuming that you don't have children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the back seat is not great. Yeah. Like, it, it seems fine, but like not a ton of room. It depends on uh, the occupant size. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how tall people are. And yeah. the front seat occupant <laughs> yeah. size. Yeah. Like, it's certainly helpful right now that Kaylee's small. Otherwise, the back seat becomes not very useful. Like, there's probably not a whole lot of space behind me. I certainly couldn't sit behind you. Yeah. Okay. And I'm six foot three, so. I'm 5'11. So, 
to <laughs> uh, kind of averages out to normal sized adults. Yeah. <laughs> between the two of us. Yeah, this car is brutally fast, but can also be driven super leisurely, and it does both really well, which cannot be said about every car. Steering lightens up, but it also gives you a lot of confidence. Brakes are excellent. I can safely say if you're in the market for something like this, yeah, I'd recommend it. However, I've not spent enough time in Taycan to know if that would be the better buy. I personally prefer the styling of the Taycan. We shot some photos, we shot an intro, <laughs> and now let's head back down the mountain. We're starting with 46 miles of estimated range. We'll probably regen a little bit, so that's why I'm making note of it. And let's go. Would you be kind enough to set the nav, please? All right. There's probably recent, yeah, Marengo, that second one. Okay. That should be close enough, start. Uh, replace all destinations. already instantly displaying 78 miles of estimated range now. <laughs> Interesting. Brakes are awesome. lovely Mazda CX-5 is in front of us. Those actually <laughs> handle quite well. They could be hustling a lot more if they wanted to be. Thank you Mazda CX-5. <laughs> So much better than the Mach-E yesterday, it's not even funny. Yeah. The Mach-E felt like it was all over the place. Well, it cut power, didn't it? Yeah, oh, big time. Whereas this is barely charged and it's way better. I mean, not even just raw power, but the way the power delivery is. Overall, really nice. Any thoughts, Kaylee? Yeah, I mean, it's a nice car. <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> like we're, <laughs> How did it feel from the passenger seat as I was ripping it? I mean, comfortable. More comfortable than any other car that I've driven with you in. Okay. I mean, Would definitely say... very comfortable in the passenger seat. I mean, I still don't like the passenger seat, but <laughs> it's the most comfortable of the passenger seats. <laughs> I suppose. You just like control of driving. Yeah. I hate driving with you in the front of the wheel. Like, I just like to be the one driving. And thoughts from the back seat? Were you sliding around a lot? Um, it was really good. I, I've driven a lot of EVs, and not, a lot of EVs are fast, or are quick. This is fast, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, this actually handles to go with the acceleration Absolutely. versus, like, most Teslas. They're fine. Like, they're not necessarily bad, but they're... They, they're not designed to handle. They're one-trick ponies, essentially. Acceleration, Model 3 performance, the exception to an extent, but nowhere near this level. Yeah, I was really impressed with, like, how quickly you were able to, like, get when you got out of a corner, like, accelerate and then, like, break really harsh before the corners. Like, it's def definitely very responsive, which is great. It's a sports car that's yeah. an EV. It's not an EV trying to be a sports car, kind of, sort of. Yeah. It's kind of the opposite approach of the Mach-E GT, where it has so much heritage of being a sports car, 
and lets you down the entire way. Whereas this is an RS Audi and it lives up to the RS badge. Yeah. I think a lot of that might come down to some of the Porsche involvement, but still it's one hell of a car. Yeah. And I would have no qualms recommending this to anyone if yeah. that if this kind of car is something you're shopping for. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll see all our future EV content and check out some of our other videos. We have lots of EV content from Lucid Air to Volkswagen ID4 all the way to Mini Cooper SE. See you guys next time. Bye.